Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Welcome back. Coming up on 6.30 on WKYT This Morning, new details about a soldier hurt in what police say was a drunken hit and run caused by a Lexington firefighter. That teen's family says a Lexington College and the people on the scene are responsible for their son's death. And we'll have details about a traffic alert in Lexington's busy Chevy Chase area. Those stories and more. And breaking news as it happens. It's coming up on WKYT This Morning. Hello there. Good morning and welcome. It's so good to have you with us. We're to Wednesday now. It's hump day, September 24th. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith, really heading into a nice weather week. Well, we've had one. Yes, yeah. What a stretch we're on. Beautiful weather in the Commonwealth, easy to enjoy. And let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris with that ahead of the news. Good morning. Hey, good morning. It has been easy to enjoy. And look, we're going to continue that trend throughout the next several days. Takes us off toward the weekend. Now, the weekend will add a little rain in there on one of those days. And I'll show you that coming up in your full forecast. But right now, 40s. Even some 50s. Roadways look good. Remember, one cancellation there in the airways out to Charlotte from Bluegrass. So check that out before you take off. Uh, a good clean start. I mean, you're looking at 48. It is on the cool side, so the kids going off to the bus stop, once again, long sleeve shirt or a light jacket. By the afternoon, get rid of it. 76 degrees. That's very, very pleasant for this time of year. It's right at average. And as we go throughout the next several days, we'll continue to increase and head toward those 80s. But I talked about your weekend forecast. We have several events going on, and I'll give you your forecast for those events coming up in a few minutes. All right. We like the trend. We thank you. And let's get to the news. A Lexington firefighter accused in a drunken hit and run is a wanted man in another state. Our partners at the Herald Leader are reporting that Jared McCargo has a warrant for DUI out of Cobb County, Georgia. That goes all the way back to 2002. Well, last week, Lexington police say he crashed into a beer trap, the beer trap uh, bar there on Euclid Avenue, seriously injuring a soldier and some others. WKYT's Victor Puente is there live this morning. What we're learning, uh, some new details about the victim now from Victor. Good morning. According to the Guam National Guard Facebook page, Noel Espino was in Lexington for training when he was hit outside of the beer trap. Now that page says several other members of the Guam National Guard are also in Lexington. It also says the Kentucky National Guard has pledged to assist Espino and his family during his recovery. He was one of several people outside of the beer trap Friday night when a driver backed their SUV into the front of the building. Espino was critically injured. The driver sped away. Lexington police arrested Jared McCargo about 40 minutes later. They say he admitted to hitting the building, then driving home. He's charged with DUI, assault, leaving the scene of an accident, and driving without insurance. Well, since the crash, patrons at the beer trap have been putting money in a jar for Espino. Today, a full-fledged fundraiser will take place with $1 from every beer going to him. Noel has a long road to recovery, and um, it's important for the beer trap, the Chevy Chase neighborhood, and, and Lexington in general to rally around and show him that he's not alone. He was a Lexington firefighter, but the city fired him on Monday. Live in Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. Victor, we thank you. New this morning, a man has died after an accident at the Kentucky Speedway. The Kentucky Enquirer reporting that Stephen Cox of Indiana died over the weekend. He was at the track in Sparta on September 14th. Kentucky Speedway says there was an accident on the track during an event called the Rusty Wallace Racing Experience. The event allows people to pay to ride in or drive race cars. Well, parents of a teenager who drowned at Transylvania University are now taking legal action. 13-year-old Ricky Harris died in June. He was at Transy for a week-long academic summer camp. The family's attorney says Harris was unresponsive in the indoor pool for more than 10 minutes. His parents have filed a civil lawsuit against the university, a camp counselor, and two lifeguards. The family and their attorney think that if Kentucky had a negligent homicide statute, situations like this would be looked at differently. Don't just brush this aside. Terrible accident um, and not learn from it. Do something about it. Right now, attorneys are having experts review the lifeguard certification and training as well as the pool setup. 
The university's only comment is that its thoughts and prayers are with the Harris family. Now 6.33 on WKYT and new this morning, investigators are looking into the cause of a fire that destroyed an old gas station. The old Leach Market building on US 27 in Lincoln County was already up in flames by the time firefighters could arrive last night. Firefighters told the Interior Journal that there have been at least five illegal burns around that building in the last three months. The owner of the property told firefighters that he was in the process of tearing the building down. Well, it is a final farewell for a fallen firefighter today. First responders from around the country will be coming to honor a man who died after an accident during an ALS ice bucket challenge. WKYT's Whitney Wetzel is at our live desk with more on how the Campbellsville firefighter is going to be remembered today. Whitney? Fire Captain Tony Greider died Saturday from injuries that he suffered while helping with an ice bucket challenge. His funeral service is scheduled for later today. Last month, Greider and fellow firefighter Alex Quinn were both in the ladder bucket of a fire truck when an electrical current from nearby power lines struck them. Quinn was released from a Louisville hospital last week. Yesterday, firefighters from across the country traveled to Adair County to attend Greider's visitation. Fire crews from Lexington, and as far as Washington, D.C., are coming together to honor the fallen firefighter. Grider's funeral service will start at noon today at Columbia Christian Church. At the live desk, Whitney Watzel, back to you. A former police officer is in jail accused of attacking disabled adults and his wife. Somerset police arrested Brian Doan. They say the adults were attacked at a home on Kentucky 3091 while under Doan's care. The home is operated by Star Support Services. Court records list Doan as the program's director. Police say the victims were abused. Substantial injury, uh, enough to warrant uh, the victim being transported to UK hospital for further uh, treatment where he remains at this time. Police say Doan is a former Berea and Mount Vernon police officer. A financial consultant accused of stealing more than a million dollars from a client had his first day in court. Kenneth Thomas's attorney entered a not guilty plea on his behalf. Police say Thomas founded Retire America. We're told he sold fake bonds to the victim. Lexington police say there could be more charges and more victims. Well, community members are learning more about a major road project that's proposed and getting underway in some cases. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet held a meeting about the expansion of the Mountain Parkway in Wolf County. The state wants to expand the 30 miles between Campton and Prestonsburg from two lanes to four. We want to improve the ability to transport goods and services as well as, as uh, enable the people of eastern Kentucky to transport themselves back and forth between Pikeville and Lexington. The expansion will cost more than $700 million and it could take 6 to 10 years to complete. And in Lexington, a traffic alert for anyone who drives through the city's Chevy Chase area. The city of Lexington is closing some roads to remove a traffic island. Today, the right turn lane toward Tate's Creek from Euclid and High Street will be blocked off. And tomorrow, outbound Fontaine will be closed at East High Street. Uh, those closures will begin at 9 a.m. and they'll last until 3 p.m. Try to get it done in the middle of the day, but keep that in mind if you've traveled through Chevy Chase. Kroger says it will start offering ready-to-drink, single-serve wine beverages. The Herald Leader reports that the Cincinnati-based chain is partnering with a California company to sell four canned beverages. The products include a sangria-like red wine and a white wine spritzer. The Kroger on Euclid Avenue will have a spirit and wine shop separate from the main grocery building. That Kroger is undergoing a major renovation and is expected to be open by the end of the year. So getting in on the wine trend. There you go. And uh, that uh, new store has been a little bit controversial, certainly, but is on the way. So yeah. All right, let's check to see how things are out on the road. Let's go to Officer Don. Check on that live drive traffic. Hey, Don, good morning. Good morning. Well, we just talked about Chevy Chase, all the construction project that's happening there today. That will get underway after 9 o'clock this morning as far as major impact on traffic flow. Uh, but for now, we're okay in that area. Uh, on the north side of Lexington, there's a stalled car in the inner loop near North Broadway. Shouldn't be too big of an issue. As we get a live look at Harrodsburg and New Circle through the crossover this morning, uh, traffic's picking up, but it's still moving okay. Same deal on Versailles Road, by the way, coming in from Woodford County past the airport, looking good. On our Waze map, uh, there is nothing significant again popping up to tell you about a couple of stalled cars but all the exit ramps off the interstate look good uh, same deal for the circle with no problems at Tate's Creek or Nicholasville roads now back to you 
All right, looks good out there. Officer Don and Deanne on the air on 98 won the Bull when you get in your car. And we're on the way with more on WKYT this morning. So good to have you along with us here on this Wednesday. So golfer goes on a tirade and it's all caught on camera. Find out what it cost him to club his clubs ahead. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to lie, I've been there before. It just happens out there. I don't know how to explain it. Live Sky Camera, there is your shot. Beautiful look to the morning. Look, we got the World Chicken Festival going on. This weekend there in Laurel County, I'll have your forecast for all your festivals and events coming up next. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris and First Alert Defender. Oh, things are looking good outside. I don't see any issues whatsoever. You're traveling there on the roadways. Well, no fog threat uh, whatsoever. Maybe down in the Valley regions, but, you know, it's common uh, as we work our way down toward the southeast. Other than that, it's good. Now, if you're looking across the airways, Charlotte canceled this morning there. Uh, fly over toward the east coast. The east coast got a little system going on with a lot of rain and some wind. So that's probably the issue right there. But for the most part, things are looking pretty good airways and also roadways. All right, check this out. Did you know typically this time of year, our overnight lows are in the mid 50s. We haven't seen that any time lately. I mean, the past several mornings have been there in the low to mid 40s. Uh, so, yeah, we're getting closer and closer, and that always means one thing. You get warmer, and we add in a little rain in the forecast. But this time, it's a little bit different. We're not seeing that outside. And we're seeing 40s and 50s now, no mid 50s out and about, but we will see that in the days to come. Got one more day, which is tomorrow morning, that we're actually in the 40s. The rest of the days in the seven day forecast are in the 50s. So if you're not liking this cool weather just yet, I don't know, we're just starting fall. Uh, but yeah, it'll change for you here in the upcoming uh, several hours. There you are, 76 degrees by the afternoon. A good looking day. It's very comfortable. That's average for this time of year. World Chicken Festival going on, Burgoo Festival going on there in Lawrenceburg, and that chicken festival there in London. Things look good for you guys. I mean, it looks phenomenal. We have several festivals happening, one over in West Liberty this weekend, too, uh, as things look good for you guys there in Morgan County. So, yeah, take off, enjoy 80 degrees. It'll be warm, but, you know, that's all right. It's not too bad. 78 there on Sunday, adding a little bit of a chance of rain as we kind of have the conclusion of some of these festivals. It's not much rain, but the chance is still there. They're in toward Friday night football. It looks pretty good. Uh, 79 for a high, which means football kickoff right around 75 degrees. Can't really beat that. Saturday, UK game in Vandy. Loving it. And then we hit Sunday and off in toward next week. That's when we bring in that chance of rain as the system comes in from the south. Still several uncertainties about this, uh, so we'll be watching it closely. But as of right now, you can see not great chances, but the chances are there. But that's far away. That's five, six days yeah. away. So we're looking pretty good the next several days. Looks and awesome. Congratulations to the World Chicken Festival. 25 years. 25th yeah. year. And you said earlier, what's the cool? Well, it's uh, because uh, KFC, the original KFC, was on the north side of Corbin there in southern Laurel neat. County. I didn't yeah, know that. Where, uh, that's neat stuff. Colonel right Sanders had Colonel's, uh, or Sanders Cafe. There yeah. you go. See, yeah. you can take that to work. You'll sound smart today. <laughs> yeah. From Bill hungry, hungry for some chicken this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Here that's you nice. go. 644 the time now. A golfer has a meltdown at a Philadelphia golf club course and it is all caught on camera. Golf is the kind of sport that can get you really teed off, but this was a head turner. Chris Cataldo didn't just snap his clubs, he clubbed them. And what he didn't realize was that his buddy was recording this tantrum. Normally he's an above average golfer, but at a tournament near Philadelphia he had a really bad couple of days. He apologized for his language. <laughs> Hear it bleep there. He figures he destroyed about a thousand dollars worth of clubs. That Man. is some frustration. As Micah <laughs> says, he's been there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> golf is an easy. That's right. Golf it's not is an not easy sport. I agree. <laughs> We can kind of sympathize with the guy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's good to have you along. WKYT this morning. Hope you don't have a day like that. Let's yeah. make it a good day Let's here on this not. Wednesday. We have a lot more news. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Nora O'Donnell. Coming up 40 years after Blondie hit the music scene, Debbie Harry and Chris Stein share memories. Plus a new book full of rare photos. That's coming up on CBS This Morning.
Good looking start to the day. Welcome back, 648. Happening today, several businesses will be raising money to help a soldier who was seriously injured in a crash. This morning, we've learned the victim, Noel Espino, is a member of the Guam National Guard. He and several other members of the Guam Guard were in Lexington for training. Police say Espino was one of several people hurt Friday night when a driver crashed into the beer trap on Euclid Avenue. Jared McCargo, a Lexington firefighter, was arrested shortly after that crash. He's now facing several charges, including DUI, and he's been fired by the city. Today at the beer trap, a dollar from every beer will go toward a fund to help Espino. And other businesses are also donating to that fund. New this morning, Lexington police arrested a woman accused of stabbing a man. It happened about 1 this morning on Wem Drive off East Tiverton Way. Police say the couple was at a friend's house when they got into an argument. Jacqueline McColgan then stabbed her boyfriend in the chest, according to police, who have charged her with assault while her boyfriend is being treated at UK Hospital. And Lincoln County investigators are looking into the cause of a fire that destroyed an old gas station. The old Leach Market building on US 27 in Lincoln County was already up in flames by the time firefighters arrived last night. Firefighters told the Interior Journal that there have been at least five illegal burns around the building in the last three months. The owner of the property told firefighters he was in the process of tearing the building down. A man has died after an accident at the Kentucky Speedway. The Kentucky Inquirer reporting that Stephen Cox of Indiana has died. He was at the track in Sparta back on September 14th. Kentucky Speedway says there was an accident at the track during an event called the Rusty Wallace Racing Experience. That event allows people to pay to ride in or drive race cars. Making national headlines this morning, President Obama addresses the United Nations General Assembly today as the U.S. is trying to rally more support in the battle against ISIS. The remarks come as the U.S. and five Arab allies carried out airstrikes against ISIS targets inside Syria. The U.S. also launched additional strikes against a second and terrorist organization who are thought to be planning an attack against the West. The president will also preside over a special meeting of the U.N. Security Council today. A $50,000 reward is being offered for the safe return of a missing University of Virginia student. Last night, police issued an arrest warrant for the man they say may have abducted the college sophomore. Brian Webb has the latest. Virginia police are putting up these wanted posters to try to track down Jesse Leroy Matthew Jr. They believe he was the last person seen with 18-year-old Hannah Graham before she vanished. Charging him with a class 2 felony of abduction with the intent to defile. Surveillance video shows Matthew with Graham in an area not far from the University of Virginia campus in the hours before she went missing September 13th. Forensic teams are now analyzing more than two dozen items collected during a search of the 32-year-old's car and apartment. We absolutely are continuing our search for Hannah, even as we speak, and we will continue our search for Hannah. Hannah's parents are pleading for the public's help. Please, 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 if you have anything, however insignificant you think it may be, call the police tip line. Jesse Matthew went to the police station Saturday to ask for a lawyer, then fled the scene and hasn't been seen since. Brian Webb for CBS News, New York. So far, more than 300 tips have been called into the police hotline. A man who killed two former UPS co-workers before killing himself is described as someone who was troubled over his work and financial situation. Police in Birmingham, Alabama say 45-year-old Carrie Jo Tesney walked into the UPS shipping center yesterday and opened fire a day after being fired. Tesney's pastor says the problems he was having at work never suggested the situation could turn violent. Now 652, you know where to go for the latest all day long, WKYT.com. And trending right now is this lawsuit filed by the family of a 13-year-old who drowned while swimming at Transylvania University back in the summer. A lot of you also checking out our story about a suspect being shot during a holdup at a Winchester truck stop. The alleged accomplice talked with us. He says he was just there for breakfast. Our terrific string of beautiful weather days continues. Micah says we'll have more nice sunshine 
fine to enjoy today. Really sounds awesome. Those highs climbing into the mid 70s. And we'll be heading for the 80s heading into the weekend. Uh, that's, of course, ahead of some changes next week. Check our first alert weather page for the latest updates. We have details about a traffic alert in Lexington, the city removing a traffic island in the area around Euclid, Fontaine, and Tate's Creek, where that all comes together there in Chevy Chase. And that is slated to last a couple of days. They'll try to do it in the middle of the day. Kentucky.com with an interesting headline this morning coming in this election year. And when it comes to dealing with Islamic terror groups, they say Mitch McConnell is Obama's candidate, referring to the senator's support for the president's current strategy, as well as his ongoing efforts to tie his opponent, Alison Grimes, to the president. A state Senate candidate is asking for an apology or an explanation from Lexington Mayor Jim Gray. Ralph Alvarado, who's a Republican, is hoping to become the first Latino elected to the General Assembly, but Gray was complimentary of Democratic Rep incumbent R.J. Palmer while speaking at the Latino Festival last weekend downtown. Well, CBS This Morning is coming up at 7 with world and national news and, of course, our local updates. Join us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And for the latest news anytime, WKYT.com. Well, but you're just talking about the Chevy Chase situation or removing that traffic island. That will be a mess. We're going to see an impact on High Street a little bit later, of course, on Euclid. Uh, that'll start especially during your lunch hour today, so keep that in mind. Now, for now, the circle looks good. So does the interstate. No wrecks in the ways. We get a live look at Hamburg traffic at Sir Barton and Man of War. Beautiful shot there. Uh, and we're doing great cutting across from Man of War to Sir Barton. Now back to you. Yeah, we're looking outside, too. It's pretty cool. I mean, you saw Officer Don with his vest on. Smart man. And, and look, if you're going to step outside this morning, especially those kiddos heading out to the bus stop, they'll need a light jacket or a long sleeve shirt just at the bus stop. By the time they get home, uh, it'll probably be in their boat bag, no doubt about it, because it looks good this afternoon, but it is cool this morning. 46 there in Frankfurt. Uh, things are pretty good in Richmond. It is a bit chilly. Now, as we go throughout the day, it's going to be, you know, exactly what we have seen the past couple of days. Looks wise, you'll have mostly sunny skies, but we're slowly but surely warming each and every single day all the way throughout the weekend. Yesterday and the day before and the day before that, upper 60s, lower 70s. Today, it's going to be more, more like mid 70s. And that's actually average for this time of year is 76 degrees. So you're going to have an average day, but it won't look like an average day. Look like an extremely nice day, and that takes us uh, not only for today, but off toward the weekend. Like I said, the next few days, phenomenal. The weekend, yeah. festivals, several still going on, and, and uh, yeah, it looks great for them. Yeah. Nothing wrong with being average right now. Absolutely not. <laughs> we will take it. We will. Each and every day. And we thank you. And two Portland, Oregon police officers proved that they're willing to serve in any situation. Portland police said a Pizza Hut delivery driver was involved in a crash earlier this month. So the two officers finished the delivery for him. The driver is doing all right. And when the officers arrived at the home of the customer, he snapped a picture of the officers who went out of their way. I'm guessing. That pizza may have been a little cold, but you Might know some people like cold pizza. <laughs> but the guy wanted to take a picture <laughs> and get some cold, uh, get some uh, publicity for those guys. And you're right, maybe enjoyed his cold pizza. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, huh? that's pretty cool right there. Very you cool. Love it. All right. Well, nobody's more up to date than you to start your day. We want to thank you so much for being with us on WKYT this morning. Remember, the news is always on at WKYT.com, and at mid morning is coming up at ten. And CBS this morning is next. Have a great Wednesday.